Apparently, there was a big fire at Company HCL. When I heard the news, it felt like I had been hit on the head with a hammer because that's where my husband works. I hoped he was okay. I called him, praying he had escaped the fire. The phone rang, and then I heard his voice say, Hello. Eric, where are you? Are you safe? I asked, my voice getting louder with relief. He sounded annoyed and said, What's the matter with you? Why are you talking so loud? I'm at work. Don't call me while I'm working. Then he hung up. At least he wasn't involved in the fire, but his response was strange. My name is Lisa, and I'm 35 years old. I'm a nurse and work has always been the main part of my life. I got married six years ago when I was 29. I felt lucky to get married just before turning 30. I met my husband Eric through a mutual friend. We hit it off right away and have enjoyed our married life in company housing. We've been married for six years, but we don't have any children yet. I believe we can build a happy family together. Eric is sometimes self-centered, but he's generally a kind and good person. He shows his love to me, and I feel safe with him. However, lately he's been very busy with work, even working on his days off. He seems tired and doesn't pay much attention to me at home. After dinner, he sits on the sofa with the TV on, but doesn't watch it. He looks at his phone all the time, using the TV as background noise. When I talk to him, he only responds with yeah or oh or something like that. I thought maybe I said something to make him upset, but I decided he was just tired from his busy work schedule. If he was that tired, I would make sure to bring him lunch and prepare dinner every day. I tried to make our daily lunch and dinner nutritious and well-balanced. Then one day, something strange happened. The day before, a coworker called me to ask if I could switch from the night shift to the day shift. So I suddenly had to change to the day shift. I had originally told my husband I would be working the night shift, so I thought I should tell him about the change. But I was busy and ended up emailing him on the same day. I emailed him, saying that I had switched to the day shift and would make dinner and wait for him. But he didn't reply. I thought he was busy at work, so I focused on my own work too. But even after I finished work, he still hadn't responded. He used to reply quickly, even using emojis sometimes. But this time, he only read my message and didn't reply. Is he working so hard, or is this just what happens after six years of marriage? Feeling a little sad, I went to the supermarket on my way home from work to buy some ingredients because I decided to cook a nutritious dinner for him again. It was very cold that day, so I decided to make a one-pot dish. I cut up the ingredients and waited for him to come home so I could start cooking right away, but no matter how long I waited, he never came home. He usually arrives home at 8 p.m., but when he finally came home, it was already 10 p.m. Welcome back. You're home late. Did you have to work overtime? Oh yeah, but did you have to work the day shift suddenly? Uh, yeah, a coworker had an emergency. I was a little late in telling you. I see. Well, I guess you couldn't help it, but it's a little annoying that you told me on the same day. I might have had plans for a drink or something. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I said that and turned on the stove for the pot. Oh, you haven't eaten yet? No, I thought I'd wait for you. Well, thanks, but next time you don't have to wait for me. I felt a little sad hearing my husband say that. I waited for the hot pot to boil. It started to simmer, so I served my husband's portion, then mine. I was starving after waiting for him all this time. I was enjoying the hot pot, thinking it was delicious. Then I noticed my husband wasn't eating much. What's wrong? You don't seem to be eating much, I said. He looked a bit confused and replied, Oh yes. Actually, I was working late, and a junior colleague bought me a rice bowl, so I'm not really hungry. Um, okay. You should have told me that before I started making the hot pot, I said, feeling a bit upset. He seemed to notice my mood and said, Okay, put my portion in the fridge. I'll eat it tomorrow morning, trying to cheer me up. Then he lay down on the couch, 
A few minutes later, he got up and suddenly said, I'm going for a walk. That's unusual, I said. I haven't been getting enough exercise lately, and I've been working late, so I need a change of pace, he answered as he began to get ready to go out. I felt a little empty sitting alone at the table eating the hot pot, so I put my portion in the fridge too. I felt like I had eaten too much and my husband and I hadn't spent much time together lately, so I decided to go for a walk with him. But he refused and said it's not good to move just after eating. He also said he wanted to go for a long walk alone. He ended up going out for a walk by himself. I thought his behavior was suspicious, so I secretly followed him. My fear turned out to be true. Despite my voice, my husband was walking with great enthusiasm. He stopped in front of the park, a bit far from our house. He looked around and seemed to be communicating with someone on his phone. I wondered who he was talking to. A few minutes later, a car pulled in. My husband approached the car and started talking lightly with the person in the driver's seat. It was dark and hard to see, so I couldn't make out much more. I got closer to the car and saw the person in the driver's seat. She had long curly hair and glossy lipstick. It was a woman, laughing happily as my husband got into the passenger seat. He was totally having an affair, right? By the time I thought that, the car had already driven away. I stood there for a while stunned. Then my husband sent me a text message saying he met someone he knew and would be home a little late. Someone he knew just out of nowhere. I didn't believe him at all. He had said he had already eaten and didn't have an appetite. But it was past 3 a.m. when he came home. He didn't even notice that I was awake. He seemed tipsy and went to the kitchen to drink a glass of water. After that, he often worked overtime only when I was on the day shift. We always had a hard time matching our off days, but now it's even harder. Yesterday he worked overtime, and today he has to work on his day off. But is it really work? I wonder if he's meeting the woman I saw that day. I can't help but think about it. I went online to look for information about detective agencies and found myself submitting an investigation request to the most reliable one. I felt guilty about investigating behind his back, but if nothing is going on, I could trust my husband again. So I decided to have them investigate. Waiting for the results of the investigation was really hard. My husband was as quiet as ever, and every time I saw his face, the woman was on my mind. I wanted to get a clear picture as soon as possible. Then something incredible happened. It was Saturday, and I was busy working as usual on the day shift. My husband was also at work on his day off. I was concentrating on my work, thinking that since we were both at work, I didn't have to think about anything else. Then I heard the sirens of a fire truck in the distance. The sound got closer and closer, louder and louder. Just when I thought they were passing by, I heard another siren. It wasn't just one fire truck, but three or four more. This must mean that there was a big fire nearby. I felt uneasy and worried. Then two of my colleagues came back from the hospital room with serious looks on their faces. They were talking about the fire. You mean the fire? I asked. Yes, that's right. There was a big fire at Company HCL, one of them said. At that moment, it felt like I had been hit on the head with a hammer. That was the company where my husband worked. I quickly explained the situation to my colleagues and went to call my husband to make sure he was safe. Please be safe, I thought as I dialed his number. Even though we hadn't been talking much lately, I always saw him off when he left for work in the morning. I prayed and hoped he had escaped from the fire. The phone rang, and then I heard his voice say, Hello. Eric, are you safe? I asked, my voice getting louder with relief. He sounded annoyed and said, What's the matter with you? You're talking so loud. I'm at work. Don't call me while I'm working. Then he hung up. At least he wasn't involved in the fire, but his answer was strange. There was a fire with several fire trucks on the scene. How could he be working like that? Did he not go to work? Why was he so cold to me when I was worried about him? I was getting more and more angry. Maybe I had been seeing him off, 
just so he could go to another woman since we got married. Then I made a decision. I would leave that house. As soon as I got home, I started packing my stuff. When I looked in the mailbox, I saw that the results from the detective agency had arrived. I decided to leave the house with the results of the investigation. My parents helped me pack my things. The moving company would be here soon too. I had my things moved out right away. My husband didn't seem to know that I knew the truth. I didn't hear from him at night. I guessed he was staying with his lover the whole time. I packed a lot of my furniture and appliances for my single days. The room was almost empty and looked deserted. Staring at the room, I realized I had no lingering affection for this life. For now, I moved my belongings to my parents' house and looked for a new place to live alone. My husband finally called me the next day. Hey, what's going on? Most of your stuff is gone. Of course, I moved out of that house. What? What were you thinking? When are you coming back? What about my food? What about the house chores? I was in shock. After all this, that's all you think about when it comes to me? While talking to him, I remembered the fire at his company. This guy was with his affair partner instead of going to work. Anger welled up in me. Why don't you get another woman to do that? Huh? What are you talking about? You were with a woman named Michelle today, weren't you? Huh? What are you talking about? I was working at the office. Oh, at the office? How long did you work today? It was a busy day. Even though I was working on my day off, it took me until late in the evening. I see. That's why I was so surprised that you moved out. Why don't you stop lying already? Huh. You lied about going to work, right? I wasn't lying. I was working. What's going on? How can you work until the evening when there was a fire in the office during the day? Huh. When I called you during the day, several fire trucks were dispatched to your company. They were there to put out a fire that broke out at your office. That's why I called you. I wanted to know if you were okay. You told me not to call you at work, and you talked like there was no fire. Well, he started to say. And I have evidence of the affair from a detective agency. There's no way for you to get away with this. You have to go through my lawyer from now on. I'll make sure I get the alimony. Oh no, he said, repeatedly begging for my forgiveness and apologizing to me. But I no longer had any affection for him. I'm sorry, but there's no way to fix this. I'm hanging up now. Wait, wait, he pleaded. I went to my lawyer and demanded a divorce and alimony from him. The divorce was finalized and he couldn't get away with it because of all the evidence. My husband and his affair partner had to pay me a reasonable amount of alimony. It turned out that my husband's partner was a junior colleague at the same workplace. The news of their affair spread through the company quickly. Having an affair when the company was dealing with a fire caused a lot of negativity among their colleagues. My husband and his affair partner are now getting cold stares from everyone around them, and they feel very ashamed of themselves. They really deserve it. Meanwhile, I moved into my new place and started to rebuild my life. My parents were incredibly supportive during this tough time. They helped me pack up my things and settle into my new home. It wasn't easy, but I felt a sense of relief being away from the toxic environment I had been living in. I focused on my job and took on more shifts at the hospital. My colleagues noticed that I was quieter than usual, but they respected my need for space. Slowly, I started to feel more like myself again. I even picked up a new hobby gardening. It was therapeutic to nurture something and watch it grow. Two weeks later, I received a letter from my ex-husband. He apologized again and begged for another chance. He wrote about how much he missed me and how miserable he was without me. But his words didn't move me. I had made my decision and there was no turning back. I replied briefly, telling him that I wished him well, but there was no chance of reconciliation. I hoped he would find a way to be happy, but it wouldn't be with me. It was time for both of us to move on. One day, I ran into an old friend from college. We'd have lost touch over the years but it was nice to catch up. 
She had also gone through a tough breakup and understood what I was going through. We decided to meet regularly, and soon, we became close friends again. It felt good to have someone to talk to and share my feelings with. Months passed, and I found myself in a much better place. The pain and anger I had felt started to fade, and I began to look forward to the future. I even started dating again, taking things slow and enjoying getting to know new people. My ex-husband's affair and the divorce were hard lessons, but they taught me a lot about myself and what I want in life. I learned the importance of self-respect and the value of true, supportive relationships. I knew that I deserved better and that I would never settle for anything less again. Life was starting to feel normal again, and I was grateful for the journey I had taken to get there. It wasn't the path I had expected, but it led me to a stronger, happier version of myself. And for that, I was thankful. Meanwhile, I moved to a new apartment and started living a comfortable single life. The new place is cozy, and I feel at peace here. I've been focusing on myself and enjoying the freedom of being on my own. I hope to meet a sincere man in the future, but I'm not in a rush. I'm taking my time because I want to find someone who truly respects and loves me. My job as a nurse is stable and fulfilling. It keeps me busy, and I find joy in helping others. This stability has given me the chance to focus on my personal growth and well-being without the pressure of jumping into another relationship too quickly. I've been spending my free time exploring new hobbies and interests. Gardening has become one of my favorite activities. It's therapeutic to watch my plants grow and flourish, much like I am. Looking back, I think about how she found out about her husband's affair. The fire at his company was unexpected and shocking, but it brought the truth to light. He shouldn't have had an affair to begin with, and it was only a matter of time before she found out. His actions were hurtful, and the consequences he faced were well-deserved. I've also started reconnecting with old friends and making new ones. It's nice to have a supportive social circle. We often go out for dinners, movies, or just have long chats over coffee. These interactions have been crucial in helping me heal and move forward. I've learned a lot from this experience. I've learned to value myself more and to recognize the red flags in a relationship. I've also learned the importance of taking things slow and not rushing into anything. This time, I want to make sure that my next relationship is built on trust, respect, and mutual understanding. For now, I'm content with my single life. I enjoy coming home to a peaceful, quiet apartment. I love having the time to read, cook, and just relax without any worries. My evenings are often spent with a good book or a movie, and sometimes I treat myself to a nice homemade meal or a dessert. I know that finding the right person will happen when the time is right. Until then, I'm focusing on making myself happy and living a fulfilling life. The journey has been tough, but it has also made me stronger and more self-aware. Enjoying my single life as a nurse has been a rewarding experience. I've grown a lot as a person, and I'm excited about what the future holds. I'm taking one day at a time and cherishing every moment. I know that when I do meet someone special, I'll be ready, and it will be worth the wait.